Do you like living on the edge? Do you like risking your system to well-known exploits and any exploits that might happen in the future? If yes, I really hope you're not your family's tech, but also you may want to consider disabling mitigations in your kernel. That's not a recommendation. I don't think you should do that, but if you want to be dumb, the option is there. This is done with a very simple kernel parameter, mitigations equals, and setting this to off will disable all optional CPU mitigations. This improves system performance, but it may also expose users to several CPU vulnerabilities. Things like Spectre, Meltdown, and a bunch of other exploits that you may or may not have heard of. Now, if you've never messed with your mitigation settings, you don't need to be worried about these. By default, it is set to auto. Auto is going to check the architecture you're using and enable the mitigations relevant to your system. The other option you have is picking and choosing which mitigations you actually care about. But regardless of what you go and set them to, you're probably going to be using these kernel parameters to set them at runtime. But what if you knew that you never wanted any of these mitigations, so it'd make a lot more sense to disable everything at compile time. Well, right now, there's no easy way to go and do that. There are individual options to go and disable different individual mitigations, but no easy turn everything off. That is, until this kernel patch existed. This aims to fix exactly that. Right now, it is not possible to disable CPU vulnerability mitigations at build time, at compile time. Mitigation needs to be disabled passing kernel parameters such as mitigations equals off. This patch creates an easy way to disable mitigation during compile time. Config default CPU mitigations off. So insecure kernel users don't need to deal with kernel parameters when booting insecure kernels. Now, this particular version is an RFC, a request for comment, basically trying to get feedback on whether this is a good idea and anything that needs to be modified. Now, it didn't really get that much in the way of feedback, basically just about the structure of the patch itself, the way the description is written, the fact that it's still written with an 80 character line limit in mind, even though we're now at 100, and other tiny text modifications. But nothing about whether doing this is a good idea altogether. Thanks for the review. I'm more curious if creating a new config option would be an acceptable approach, and it seems so. I'll send a non-RFC patch soon. And that patch is this version here. Basically, the only difference is the issues brought up in this comment here have now been addressed. So now everything here is on one line, there is some slight documentation changes, and that's pretty much it. But sadly, no one has actually commented on this version. It's not uncommon for patches like this to sit around for weeks, for months, until anybody actually gets to it. Because a change like this isn't really a major change. It's not going to fundamentally change how the kernel works. It's not something a lot of people are asking for. So anybody that would be reviewing it, this is going to be fairly low on the priority list. And a big part of the reason why is most people would seriously advise against disabling these kernel mitigations, especially doing so blindly or not knowing exactly what you're doing. Now, newer CPUs are going to have hardware mitigations for a lot of these older issues, and much of the affected software are going to be patched to make sure the exploit cannot be done with that software. With a web browser, for example, a lot of these exploits could be done through JavaScript. And if all you've done is read a blog post saying you get 5, 10, 15% better performance if you disable mitigations, which absolutely is true depending on the system you're using, I would argue that disabling the mitigations probably still isn't worth the risk unless you know that your system is not going to be affected in any reasonable way. With that being said, there are some users who simply don't care. Safety and security be damned, I want to get the absolute most out of my system 
it doesn't matter what exploits I'm affected by. And for those people, a patch like this would actually be kind of useful. Or let's say you're shipping a custom kernel. This kernel is supposed to be a performance kernel. It's stripping out a bunch of things you don't need, and it even wants to go so far as having mitigations disabled. Now, as it stands, you'd have to rely on the user going and disabling mitigations, or you go and patch the kernel and disable the mitigations yourself. But having this build option makes disabling those mitigations and shipping that to the user a very straightforward process. Now, one thing I didn't touch on is if this patch does get merged and you disable mitigations at compile time, the mitigations will still be compiled into the code base. The only difference is by default, they are not going to be used. So if you wanted to, you could have them disabled by default. And then if you realize maybe some of the mitigations are needed, you can actually go and re-enable them, or you could set it back to auto and just use the regular default settings. But for the people this would affect, I do really hope it does get merged. But let me know, would you actually disable mitigations at compile time? Or better yet, right now using the kernel parameter, using mitigations equals off, do you actually disable mitigations? Now, judging by my very scientific poll of my audience, the answer is probably not. 35% said they use mitigations, 51% said they didn't know they could even disable them, only 14% said they don't use them. Now, this has only been open for 21 hours, so it might shift a little bit, but this seems to be the general direction it's going in, which doesn't really surprise me because it makes sense to have the mitigations enabled. Even if there is going to be a bit of a performance benefit by getting rid of them, I don't think for most people that's really going to be valuable enough to potentially put their system at risk. But maybe you disagree. Let me know down below. And if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, suddenly bear a pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.